Hello everyone, welcome to the Comexis Cast, all the news you need to know from our inbox to yours. Today we're talking about small businesses finding a lot of success with micro-influencers. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Matthew McGordy, the videographer and a podcaster here at Comexis. And today, I am joined by the lead strategist at Comexis, Philip Brooks. Good morning. So today we're going to be talking about small businesses uh, finding some great success and finding some, some very nice ROI uh, with micro-influencers. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about the new format that our show is going to be having and our social media feed in general is going to be having. Uh, so this week is just happens to be Influencer Week. We found a lot of great stories about influencers that we want to talk about that we want to share uh, but most importantly we kind of want to start focusing on a lot of our topics to the buyer's journey sort of the different steps yeah. that you go across and down as uh, your targeted audience hopefully becomes aware of your brand etc cetera, etc cetera. so, so you wanna... yeah so at Comexis our strategies are built around the buyer's journey as a mm -hmm. as basically a, a building block or a framework for all the strategies that we put together for each of our clients and the reason we do that is because really the future we believe the future of marketing is you know along moving helping people move along that journey and showing clients not only how you know each of the each of their prospects move along in that in that journey but also you know we can show them specifically successes on each of those steps so we can show them why what we're doing works or show them why what we need to do you know, needs to be tweaked or whatever it, it's a lot it, it makes things a lot simpler because we can explain exactly why we're doing each of these things at each stage that we're doing them and it really takes everything and puts it in a nice perspective that everybody can look at and, and sort of understand exactly what we're trying to do with each of these individual steps so um, you know and we really think that's the future of marketing just because it's you know everybody's trying to sell something and everybody even even though everybody defines a conversion differently, you know, all of your prospects still move along some version of the buyer's journey. Yeah, so Absolutely. And we're going to be uh, designing a lot more fancy graphics and stuff like that as we go along. Um, but the short and short and sweet of it is, is that each day we're going to be going through a different step of the buyer's journey to give you a more varied picture of what you know a certain step could look like for your end user, for something that you should be doing to try and you know move your end user mm -hmm. down the line. So today we're going to be talking about awareness. So uh, just to clarify, each week we'll be going through the entire buyer's journey yes. from, from Monday through Friday. There's there's surprise, we're not surprised, but conveniently there's five F steps in our hey. buyer's journey and five days in a week. So mm -hmm. we're just going to use that format to mm -hmm. lay things out and that way you know every Tuesday we're going to be talking about the consideration stage mm -hmm. and you know and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just so to give you some clarification on, on the framework. Yes. So today we're talking about awareness, which is making end users aware of your product for those of you who for those who are not yet aware of it mm -hmm. and for as a reminder of some who are aware of it but have either forgotten, mm -hmm. fallen off somewhere, something like that. Uh, so today we're talking about micro influencers, small businesses, finding success with them, and how that regard it comes in comes awareness. in regard to awareness. awareness. Thank you. Uh, so there's a really great piece uh, by Dina Weisenberg Bryn on Forbes. It will be linked in the podcast description, and she sort of looked at um, one specific company and their success um, with micro influencer marketing. Uh, so this company was um, the mason jar storage company and they were marketing a new product called mom's mason jar rack uh, and she had um, she had spoke to them and sort of looked at a couple different numbers so she spoke to Alan Popilskis uh, who handles the marketing for mom's mason jar rack uh, it's basically a, a rack that you screw in or uh, fastened to a wall, and then it just holds mason jars in a really nice way. I'll have a picture for you to look at. Uh, it's neat. Uh, so there's a quote from him that says, we decided to work with micro-influencers as opposed to large-scale influencers due to budget, as well as due to the fact that micro-influencers, even though they have smaller audiences, have a more engaged and targeted following, leading to better use of money spend. So according to Digital marketing solutions firm Media Hub, retail and entertainment clients saw about 50% higher engagement using micro influencers, uh, the firm said last year in a post on its parent organization website. And Media Hub also reported that influencers with a thousand fans drove 85% higher engagement lift than those with 100,000 followers. And these campaigns realized 10 times more efficiency than those uses, using influencers with big following. So, Phil, you had some some strong yeah. comments to make. Well, I, I just, I, my, my, I guess that kind of clarified it, which is essentially mm -hmm. that, you know, to me, that sort of statement to say that micro-influencers have a better ROI is kind of 
duh. You mm -hmm. know, I, I think that you know we understand essentially that, that you've got this very. It's the difference between a scalpel and a battle axe. You know, you've mm -hmm. got these very very targeted influencers with a very engaged audience, as opposed to these very broad influencers that have tons and tons of different people that could potentially you know not necessarily be interested in your product because they they've got lots of different products that that particular influencer is not only hawking but you know they have a lot of different options as well. Um, you know, if you're trying to sell something you know very specific, it makes sense to go to somebody that's a little bit more like, like you know if you're not you're not going to go to uh, you know a very high-end designer if you're looking to sell these mason jar holders you're looking mm -hmm. for somebody that's you know doing a country kitchen kind of type of setup or you know something like that so I think it, it makes sense and it's uh, it's almost one of those things that you, you, you assume it's kind of taken as as, as writ but people really need mm -hmm. to be have that explained to them sometimes so um, the only concern I always have with, with influencers is always the the authenticity of said influencer but I think that a smaller audience generally leans towards a, more likely to be organically grown uh, and therefore you're less likely to see some that, that sort of fraud in there mm -hmm. because they're you know they're not concerned with getting the biggest possible audience they're just concerned mm -hmm. with getting an audience that likes what they're doing absolutely and at the end of the day you always have to do your own due diligence mm -hmm. uh, when looking through influencers uh, a Paul Pilsky um, said a couple times in the article, you know, the different ways that him and his uh, marketing team there sort of went through and looked at different influencers that might be interested in their product, some of whom were already, you know, using different mason jar crafts or, or mason jar different things. Um, so you just, you have to do your due diligence as always. Um, but I, I think you bring up a really great point in that a smaller following is typically indicative of a more homegrown right, audience. Right. And to that extent, you're of course going to have a more engaged audience. Right. You know, we've talked before about influencers. Uh, me and Josh, who's right behind me, um, we talked about on Twitter how um, the Twitter follower number is going down, you know, that's not a big deal because as long as you have an engaged audience, you know, it doesn't matter if you have 100,000 followers mm. if you're not getting engagement from a vast majority right. of them. Whereas if you have 1,000 and you're getting a engagement from a lot of them, then that's obviously right. way better. Yeah, I mean, th that's the really the, the key. It's, it's the, you know, the amount of engagement you get from it, not the amount of followers. I, I think, you know, for the amount of money it would cost to get a Kardashian, for example, you know, they're not necessarily going to represent, they're, they're representing such a large spectrum of people that the amount of people that are likely to purchase your product is a, is a smaller percentage than if you find somebody who's very, very specific to that demographic that is likely to sell you, likely to be interested in your product. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one, one thing before we, we kind of close off, because we're, we're reaching that time, um, is, as you mentioned, you know, obviously somebody who is a micro-influencer is probably going to be cheaper to sign on, as they, they also mentioned mm -hmm. in the piece. Uh, which makes a lot of sense and also that you know they will have higher engagement but also you know there's a difference between trying to spread awareness to just make people aware mm -hmm. of your brand without necessarily trying to drive and drive a purchase but there's also awareness where you want to eventually drive them down mm -hmm. a pur purchase so making a specific niche audience aware of your product, whether or not they end up buying it, will probably be more effective most of the time than just shotgun blasting right. to everyone. Yeah, and, and think about it this way too: the 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 likelihood that somebody who's a micro influencer will be happier to work with you is, is significantly higher. You're not going to have to, you know, really do a a pitch of the degree uh, that you're going to need to do with a large scale influencer. And I think that you're going to find people by and large that are going to be happy to work with you simply because they understand that you are representative of not only the types of products that they like, but you represent their audience. And I think that you're going to find it's a lot easier of a pitch. It's not going to be you know, one of those situations where you're, you're, you're like really trying to convince them why whether or not you have the, a product that they're going to work with. They're going to know just immediately upon speaking to you, oh yeah, that's definitely something that my audience will appreciate and use. Yeah, absolutely. And we've talked before about influencers. And we, when we talked about authenticity on the podcast with influencer marketing, we mentioned that a lot of influencers are looking for things that they will enjoy so they can authentically right. uh, engage with their audience and show them really quality content. I mean, you may very well find something. This is a product that that influencer themselves would feel yes. comfortable using. So exactly. it's not just a, hey, we, we sent over some random you know, type of makeup and they put it on once and probably never saw it again and gave it away. You know, With a micro-influencer, you may find someone that, that's genuinely happy to use your product because they like it. 
Absolutely. Well, that's all for today's episode of the Comexis Cast. Thank you for watching us. Philip, thank you for joining me adjacent to the table today. My pleasure. Check us out tomorrow for more. You can listen to more of us on SoundCloud, iTunes Podcast Store, Google Play Podcast Store, Google Play Music Store, Stitcher, and TuneIn. And you can watch us in full on YouTube and IGTV. And you can get our nice little snippets in your social feed by checking us out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Thank you very much, and have a great day.